That's my little gremlin. Nothing but the finest, baby. Kirkland brand diesel oil. I don't know much about air brakes, but I guess I'm gonna learn. Like, you're for real? Like, I'm just allowed to drive this off the lot? Like... Yeah, I like that. Beautiful, nice, quiet, relaxed. What's up, Reno? Shade Tree Surgeon here, and today I'm introducing you to the longest thing in my life. Now, I know everybody's immediately thinking, oh, is this gonna be an episode featuring long, tall, and deadly, blissful Ellie? Well, no. And even though plenty of blissful Ellie's fan art depicts her as a 500-foot-tall marauding giantess ready to crush us all into oblivion, this is now at 37 feet, the longest thing I own. Of course, I don't own Blissful Ellie, so I guess she wasn't in the running, but hey, look at this. Several people have been asking about this as it's been in the background of a bunch of videos. This is our new to us 1989 Vogue Prima Vista. I actually misspoke. It's 40 feet long, not 37 feet long, but it does weigh 37,000 pounds. And what are we doing with this example of faded luxury from the 80s in my yard? Well, we're gonna go over that, but there's a really good reason it's here. Now, let's go drive it around. Okay, now that is luxury, baby. Right now, it's pretty hot in here. I would tell you guys what I paid for this thing, but again, it would just make people mad. This thing costs less than a used Sportster. I can't believe it because it's in insane shape. The inside is absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna take you guys on a full tour later, but it really is a wild rig. It's built on a Crown bus chassis. It has a 12 and a half liter Detroit diesel, the biggest two stroke I've ever owned too. But speaking of Detroit's and diesel and two strokes, let's go put some go juice in this thing. And even though this might've cost less than a used Sportster, it's gonna cost a lot more than a Sportster to fill. Up. I've already let the air tank pump up, so we're ready to go. That's a lot of real estate back there. I don't know much about air brakes, but I guess I'm gonna learn. <laughs> hmm. It does have a Jake brake, and I've been told to not use the actual brakes unless I absolutely need them. Basically, I've been told to use the Jake brake to come to a stop and then to come to a complete stop the last little bit. That's the only time you use the brake. I don't know anything about driving rigs, and it's pretty crazy to me that someone can just jump in a 40 foot long, 37,000 pound vehicle with like zero qualifications. Now, I'm not worried about driving it because I've driven plenty of big trucks, but it's pretty wild that someone could just get in and drive this thing. Like, you're for real? Like, I'm just allowed to drive this off the lot? Like, no big deal. Reverse, baby. Whoa. Oh, shit. All right, let me put the camera down. Yeah, I gotta put the camera down and use my high speed backup camera up here. I'm gonna be real careful going through my yard because I don't know where the septic tank is. At this weight, this sucker might actually be able to break through. Or if I even hit a soft patch of grass. Oh, that's right, you gotta hit neutral, then drive. If you even hit a soft patch of grass or mud or something like that, not that it's rained here in a while, I can't imagine that this thing would be easy to get unstuck. All right, let's hit the road. I mean, Managed to get it at a diesel pump without smashing anything over or running anybody off the road. Now let's see how bad this is gonna hurt. Amy Bay's making the cocktail in the parking lot. Tank Monster and Sutter home. I know I've picked the right traveling companion. Doing the slob squat here at a racetrack. Listen up, baby. Pink Monster, Sutter home wine, and an uncrustable. That's my little gremlin. Something tells me it's still not actually full. Let's try again. Total of 53 gallons and about 200 bucks to get uh, up from a quarter of a tank to a full tank. And a little bit on my dad force ones. Oh, somebody found the radio, hell yeah. Well, you might be wondering why we're getting that 40 foot rig ready. And there's a really good reason we're getting it ready, but we're not gonna talk about that right now because we're also getting this motorcycle ready. Return of the ST1100, the big red wart. Also a 1989 vintage. It's about a hundred freaking degrees out here and hundred percent humidity. Let's get this thing in the garage. Luckily in there, it's only about 120 degrees. Oh, 
Well, I know that I've been promising that I'm gonna help Cami Bay get her Ducati fixed, but we're leaving Tampa and I don't know if I'm gonna have time to do that. Again, more on that later, but we're not leaving Tampa without motorcycles. Because what's the point of even traveling if you can't have a bike with you? And yeah, we're taking the RV, but we're taking bikes with us. This one's for Cami Bay, but we gotta get this $750 motorcycle with 85,000 miles on it, a little bit into fighting shape before we set it free across America with Cami Bay on its back. I actually rode this motorcycle over here, so it does run. The clutch gave out on the way over here, and the stab and grab I stopped at only had dot three for me to fill it up with, so we're gonna have to do something about that. Uh, and something about this, too. I don't even know where the clutch master cylinder is, but I really want to drain that dot three out of there and get it filled back up with fresh dot four. It's somewhere in there, somewhere. Anybody who owns an ST1100 is laughing at me right now. I assumed that the clutch slave cylinder would be on the back of the engine, but I just checked online and it's on the front. There we go. Oh, I had to loosen this up and move it around because one of the issues with this is these handlebars, which if you couldn't tell are not dock. So I have this facing straight up and down so I can actually get this fluid bled. Honestly, this is just a good excuse to flush the damn system anyway. Holy shit, that just drains right out, doesn't it? No need to suck it out. Cup underneath, I didn't expect that to happen. Find myself unprepared with no vessel. Like crap, dude, come on now. Well, this is turning into a giant pain in the ass and a giant mess. Surprise, surprise, a simple job turns into a giant mess. That's my specialty, baby. Since we're already down here, let's go ahead and throw some fresh oil on this thing too. I have no idea when the last time it was changed because uh, I definitely never changed it. And I've taken it on a couple out of state trips. So yeah, probably a good idea to get some fresh stuff in here. It actually doesn't look that bad. Or at least I'll say I've seen much, much worse out of my own motorcycles. And as far as oil for the old ST1100, nothing but the finest, baby. Kirkland brand diesel oil ought to do it. No, but seriously, this is fine. Actually, it'll be a proprietary blend of Shell Rotella diesel oil and Kirkland Signature. That's my own little secret blend. We call it Wango Tango, baby. Calls for about three and a half quarts. Sight glass looks perfect. I previously had some issues with the front brakes dragging a little bit. This was a while ago, but since I'm here, I'm not gonna do a full rebuild on them, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull them off. Grease up the pins for the floating calipers, and I'll go ahead and put some new fluid through it. Uh, good pad life. Oh, the cylinders don't look really crusty in there. Yeah, these pads are freaking totally fine. That's pretty gross. It's a little crusty. I've seen worse, but we'll go ahead and re-grease them anyway. And just a little bit of the forbidden jelly. Listen up, baby girl. A period don't stop nothing but a sentence. That's actually way too much forbidden jelly. Dude, I really didn't. <laughs> I did not eat that much. I I did it for the meme. And just because Joe the Mountain Jedi is in my head yelling at me for being wasteful, I am gonna put this on this rag right here. It took more than I needed for the meme. I'm gonna go ahead and use that to grease the other side. Oh, you fucking absolute bastard. This one with this stupid like thing that cuts off the front suspension under hard front braking, which I guess is probably a good thing. I just think it's dumb as hell. I can't get this one off with the wheel on, so maybe I can get these pads out. Maybe I can swing that out, pull the caliper towards me off of it. I guess we're about to find out. Look at that, or royally. Oh, yep, we can do that, cool. All right, that works. More than one way to skin a cat. Cool, that works. Who is he? Dude, I don't even recognize Shade Tree Surgeon anymore. Things have changed. Am I really about to do the back breaks too? God damn. I should remember when this channel was cool. Yeah, I just wanted to do something different, man. It kind of, ah, oh, dude, that turned out so awesome. Uh, you know, and the colors, so I think it's yeah, it looks really, it looks really good, man. Not as many people ordered them. I don't really care though. I'm just glad it's out there. Yeah, you know? Good. Yeah, that good, dude. Oh, we'll be doing the next one soon, man. <laughs> Take a little bit of a 
break of working on bikes and preparing to leave in our 40 foot, actually it's now a 57 foot rig, more on that in a second. Preparing to leave here in less than 48 hours. Come on baby, we ain't leaving without getting all your Brap Star orders out to you. So just picking up about 500 shirts from my man Matt over here, heading back to the house. We're gonna get these all packed up tonight in the mail tomorrow morning. Still gotta get the rig ready, still gotta get a couple motorcycles ready, still gotta pack, still gotta edit two videos, and we're going back home right now to film another episode of Ranwin Parked with Joe the Mountain Jedi because I don't want you guys to miss a Monday with him and we're going to be out of town. A lot of stuff on my plate right now. We're going 100 miles an hour and I don't have time to sneeze. But I'll tell you this, I wouldn't have it any other way. If my life wasn't in total chaos, I'll be honest with you, I don't know what I'd do. All right, guys, back at the fort. Got all the Brap Star merch dropped off inside. Jaleesi is organizing it, getting ready for us to pull an all-nighter, packing those things up to get ready for you. And in the meantime, I got Joe the Mountain Jedi heading over here right now so we can do another episode of Ranwin Parked on Barnacle boy but i gotta get the st 1100 off the lift first only a couple things left to do got the oil changed got the brakes all fixed up it runs like a champ the windshield looks like doo-doo looks like it's covered in doo-doo butter let's do something about it real quick you know there's probably some reason you're not supposed to use random orbital sander and polishing compound on a windshield but nobody ever told me so i'm gonna go ahead and do it it's good enough for plastic headlights it should be good enough for plastic windshields right we'll just exist in ignorance Does that still look like doo-doo? Kinda. We gotta do the inside though. Oh, as much of the inside as we can reach anyway. Preparing to piss off everybody who has OCD because we won't be able to get all the way down, including Cami Bay. Now that's some damage. I'm gonna leave Joe, the Mountain Jedi, to work on Barnacle Boy, freshly christened Apocalypse Cow. Well, I take the ST1100 for a rip. And I can already tell that the clutch is gonna need a little more bleeding. It's still a little soft, but at least it works. Then I had to check myself. Ho oh, ho ho! Golly, dude. 85,000 miles, 1989, dude. This is a hell of a motorcycle. I had to check myself. All of a sudden, I realized we're probably like 10 minutes into the video, y'all's time, like three days into it, my time, with multiple other videos in between. But either way, I realized we hadn't ridden a motorcycle yet. I go, what the hell am I doing? Who is he? What's going on? I can't be spending that much time in a Shade Tree Surgeon video without riding a bike. Come on, man. Yo, this thing is no slouch. I forgot how much power this motorcycle makes. And V4s are the business. I've never ridden one of those new VFR 1200s, the ones that make like 180 some horsepower. In fact, I think they stopped making them. They only make the VFR 1200X, which makes less horsepower, dumbest thing ever. I sure would like a turn on one though, because a V4, man, it's gotta be just my favorite engine configuration. The way it makes power, it gives me the fizz, baby. Yeah, I like that. I think Cammy's gonna like it too. Old Cammy Bay is definitely, we'll say, heavy handed. Lots of work to do back at the fort though. Gotta get all your orders packed up. It's not work that I'm afraid of. It's not work that I'm not looking forward to, but it's work that definitely needs to be done. You guys spent your hard earned money on Brap Star Gear supporting what we do here. It's only right that I do my very best and stay up all night to get it packed. With a couple breaks here and there to go out and rip on a motorcycle. After all, the dog's gotta let himself out to piss every once in a while. Y'all understand? That is an XS650 engine, and this rig has gone from 40 feet long to 57 feet long. Grew an extra 17 feet because who the heck is going to go anywhere without motorcycles? We've got to take three motorcycles up there. We've got, of course, got the ST1100 for Cami Bay, but that's not all we're bringing up there. Another blast from the past. We've got Roach, the Apocalypse KLR that we're finally bringing to my man, the legend, the Mithrath. He's finally getting his bike. He lives in California. We've been trying to figure out how to get it to him, but we're taking that rig to Portland, Oregon. Have I even said that in this video? We've been all over the place so much that I don't even know what I've said to you guys yet. Anyway, that's where we're going for the release of the Brap Star Carts with Sugar Tree Farm and Sessions. And Roach, the Apocalypse KLR, is coming with us. Now, if we stop anywhere on the way, I'm going to go ahead and ride Roach, but what does that leave Shay Lisi? Well, we'll talk about what that leaves Shay Lisi here a little bit later. Let's go put a couple miles on Roach. 
<laughs> the weeble wobbles, but it don't fall down. If you say one thing about Roach, say this. It is hard to kill a KLR. This was one of the very first bikes we gave away when we were doing the raffle, giving away the mid-season giveaways. My man Mithareth has been incredibly patient. It's not easy to get a motorcycle all the way across the country, and I know you could just ship it, but shipping this motorcycle across the country, holy crap, wide load, baby. Shipping this thing across the country costs about twice as much as it's worth. Wanted to give it a little bit of a shakedown run, knock the cobwebs off it, and I know Mithrath has given me permission to ride it. If we come across anything cool in between here and Portland and actually have time to stop, I don't know if we will. We might just be trucking the whole way through, but, but I wanted to knock the cobwebs off just in case we come across something cool and I end up pulling the KLR out of the trailer. And I need about three different connectors to hook up my 1989 RV to a new or trailers and going to the auto parts store work we got all the orders packed up but the dog's still gonna let himself out to piss every once in a while on a bike all right hitting the road baby bright and early leaving just like i planned at 7 30 a.m this 7 30 a.m identifies as uh, about 11 30 a.m though yeah <laughs> it's going about the same as any trip i ever do but we're packed up i managed to get all the motorcycles in back here which i can't believe i had to completely rewire trailer had to rewire how the trailer goes into the RV. RV. It has been a morning. I've had to go to Discount Auto Parts and Walmart like six freaking times. I don't know, man. I guess when you're driving a vintage RV across the nation, towing three motorcycles and hauling two girls with you, things don't always exactly go. Uh, whoa. <laughs> things don't always exactly go to plan, but that's all right because we can always make a new plan and a third plan and a fourth plan. Even a fifth plan. Are you recording me cleaning? <laughs> so I had this grand plan to do a time lapse of this RV's entire journey across America. It definitely was reaching a little bit high for me. I suck at cameras if you didn't know that. I love making videos. I'm just not very good at it. But you don't have to be good at things you love to do. Just ask any of my ex-girlfriends. And even though I know I was reaching pretty damn high thinking that I was going to time lapse this entire 3,000 plus mile trip across the country in this 40 foot rig, it was actually going amazingly. The time lapse was working out really, really well. I, I almost couldn't believe it, but then this happened. Yeah, kind of hard to film a time lapse driving across the country when the rig has failed to proceed. work, Cammy. What about your butthole? I think that's like a whole thing. You need a napkin? I was really hoping that we'd have time to pull the bikes off and go for a ride. We did, man. Hey, we're pulling them off. We're going for a little ride. Unfortunately, it's because... A broken hydraulic hose. <laughs> yeah, the RV broke down. I need a drink. Yeah, I need a drink too. So, hey, at least we get to ride. I always try to look at the bright side, even though this was a tough one, man. Made it all of 250 miles, but I guess better in the Wang where I know people than somewhere in the desert of Montana. Although, I know people in Montana too. This RV park is so peaceful, beautiful nice quiet relax <laughs> at least it was relaxed hey yeah now that the RV isn't moving anymore Shay's doing dab <laughs> Shay's doing dabs and Cammy's doing shots I mean we got nowhere to be I have a confession to make I originally wasn't going to deliver all those Brap Star orders myself. We were in such a hurry to leave in the RV that, gasp, it's true. I had asked my friend, it's finally cool to deliver them for me. And yay, the gods have punished me for it. Yes, the RV broke down. Yes, it's somewhere in the middle of the Wang. And yeah, it was probably because I asked somebody else to deliver the Brap Star orders. So now we're flying out to Portland, but that gives me time to drop off all the Brap Star orders on the Bangkok bagger. Just a lesson that tells me that I shouldn't try to mess with what's meant to be. It's very rarely that I ever learned my lesson because I think learning is for nerds, but this time I think I might have gotten an inkling of it. Now let's go terrorize the USPS. <laughs> Dang, almost too much for the war wagon. Can we fit all the boxes in? Is there room for just one more? 
Kind of? Hey, look at that. Like it was made for it. That ain't going nowhere. Probably. Uh, just to make sure it's really not going anywhere, I better reapply my hinges. There we go. These guys? Eh, they're probably good. Waste not, want not. Mmm. Yeah, well, a little smoke never hurt nothing, right? Just gotta keep those spark plugs lubricated. The Bangkok bagger rides again, lumbering forth from its fitful slumber. Its only goal, its only purpose, tear the USPS asunder. Yes, the Bangkok bagger is an ancient and weary thing, full of much evil and malice. And today it's carrying all your packages, all these little bundles of delight, to all the Brap Star weirdos out there. Remember, if the FBI asks, it's not a cult. I should have known better when it comes to cult business, you can't piss off the elder things. You know, up there in the ninth dimension gazing down on us, our elder things aren't like other people's elder things. They're different, you know? They're still two miles long, covered in scales and tentacles, except they got big fake tits and BBLs, all right? Do and I don't want to piss them off. Lesson learned. When it comes to delivering Brap Star orders, I got to do it myself. <laughs> the RV is definitely broken down, man. And let me tell you what, when it comes to a 37,000 pound vehicle, that's not something you want to push. And just running it without power steering, we lost a hydraulic line. A hydraulic line busted on the freeway and that meant losing all power steering, which I probably could have dealt with, could have muscled through that one, even going cross country. But the hydraulic pump that runs the power steering also runs the cooling fan. Why? Don't ask me. That just seems Seems ridiculous. Those are the only two things it runs. Uh, believe it or not, a 12 and a half liter Detroit diesel makes a lot of heat. So we were dead in the water. And it's a hydraulic line that runs through the chassis. It's about 30 feet long. And where we broke down, there's four different places that work on RVs and none of them would touch it. I went up there and they're like, nah, we're good. So I guess I'm just gonna have to figure this one out on my own, but that's when we get back from Portland. Yeah, today we should have been somewhere in Tennessee in the RV headed to Portland, Oregon to hang out with you guys, go on that ride that's happening this Saturday. This video is gonna come out tomorrow, Wednesday. Today's Tuesday morning. We're getting on a plane in a couple hours. Yeah, we're all jumbled up, but uh, if I wasn't existing in chaos, I don't know how I'd exist at all. You know, if I was being unkind to myself, I might say something like, subconsciously, I'm creating all this chaos because if things go awry and don't go to plan, well, I got a pretty handy excuse and if all the variables were perfect and it still messes up well there's no one to blame but myself luckily this is my story and i'll tell it how i want to so i'll be very kind to myself so i'm gonna go ahead and not say any of that nonsense <laughs> Once again, we get away with it. Huge thanks to all y'all out there for supporting the mission. Now, what the mission is, uh, I don't know, man. Ride motorcycles, hang out with fellow greasy weirdos. I mean, that's kind of it. I just want to see Brap Star on your tit because I hear so many stories about people meeting each other and making a new riding buddy, especially when they didn't have anybody to ride with in the first place because they saw a Brap Star shirt on them or a Brap Star pin on their vest or a patch or whatever it was. Keep on sharing those stories. I love to hear them. Every time I see one or read one or somebody tells me about it in person, it makes my freaking day. One more of us and one less of them. And who might the eponymous them be? Well, it's whoever ain't us, baby. If you're watching this right now, that means there is a very small amount of Brap Star shirts left right now. I always print a few extra whenever I do the pre-orders. I can't really afford to print that many, so there's probably only like one, two, maybe three in some of the more popular sizes. So if you want one, you're gonna have to act fast. They sell out super quick, and maybe one day I'll be able to afford to print more. When that day comes, I certainly will, but for right now, you better jump on it if you want one. We've got Space Trucking down there. We've got the king of motorcycles, the CB750, and of course, Big Twin, baby. And 
And that's why we're going to Oregon. We're meeting up in Oregon this Saturday the 15th at 10.30 a.m. at the Dab Factory. I'll have that address down below, both written on the screen and in the description. If you live in the PNW, I would love to see you guys out there. We're gonna do an awesome ride. We're celebrating the release of the Sessions Brap Star collab of Big Twin and Space Truck, and those are available in carts and in distillates. We're gonna be hitting a couple dispensaries and then having a party at Legion Moto Co. If you don't smoke, don't worry, baby. I don't give a crap. I still want you to come on the ride. And if you do smoke, we're gonna have some pretty cool stuff out there. Super excited to hang out with all my PNW people. I wish that we, I wish that we were there in the big rig, baby. I wish the RV had made it, but hey, that's what I get for not delivering them Brapstar orders myself. Like I said, lesson learned. Now, let's transport ourselves from right here on the Bangkok Bagger over to Portland. That would be the time of the video where I told you guys that we had teleported over to Portland and we're about to deliver all the carts that we packed up and filled a big twin space trucking and raspberry buffet to all the dispensaries that are gonna be in the stops. But yeah, I lost audio for this part, so I'm just telling you in a voiceover. Let's wave goodbye to Cami Bay and get on the road and get these carts dropped off. Here in the truck, unfortunately, but we have to because we've got way too many packages back here to take on the bike. Don't worry, we're gonna be delivering them by bike on another day, but not right here before we go on this ride to these dispensaries because more than I'm able to carry in a motorcycle over there. And I, I don't have a trailer out here yet. Myself and Sugar Tree J are in the truck pre-running the route that we're gonna take on the ride this Saturday. Let me tell you right now, it's absolutely killer. I'm gonna have a post on the Shade Tree Surgeon Instagram with a screenshot of the route on Google map so you'll be able to see what we're gonna do where we're going like a rough outline of the times don't count on those times too much because we're talking about getting together 50 bikers it's like herding cats baby but i will tell you right now the route is going to be absolutely phenomenal which is why i keep telling you guys even if you don't smoke i still want you to come you can be an absolute teetotaler don't drink don't smoke goody two shoes work out every day don't eat any gluten i don't care i still want you to come ride motorcycles with us first stop of the delivery day with all this stuff back here and it's also the first stop on the ride right here at the grass uh two in kaiser oregon this is going to be the first stop after we leave the dab factory in hillsborough oregon the ride is amazing i've actually been to this place before it's super cool let's Go drop this stuff inside though because people are asking for it and they're waiting on us and we're behind schedule but we're getting caught up Well, myself and Sugar Tree Jay were dropping off packages for all the good boys and girls out there. Uh, Shaylisi and Cami Bay were hard at lurk in the room. We don't know exactly what the room's gonna be room called yet, room. but it's turning into something pretty cool. It's the green room. The gr well, there you go, that works. <laughs> pretty good. <green laughs> yeah, room. hey, wait, no, I just got it. That's, there's layers to that one. Yeah, the green room? Yeah, I do get it. Because yeah. the wall's green. And green. Ah! Switching gears, isn't this a channel about motorcycles? That's what I always hear whenever I do anything that isn't related to motorcycles. But trust me, everything I do always leads back to something with an engine and two wheels. If you guys remember, Sugar Tree Jason got the Power Pig 2.0 to be the delivery vehicle, which we couldn't do today because there were so many orders. Not a bad problem to have. But we couldn't have done it anyway because the Power Pig actually leaked every bit of gasoline that was inside of it all over Jason's storage unit. Apparently this motorcycle isn't housebroken. These vacuum petcocks always go bad. Joe showed me how to rebuild them. I've rebuilt them myself in a previous video. And when I did, I had somebody tell me, hey, you can just take these metric petcocks, the oval ones. You can take these and actually put ATV metric petcocks in them and they work just fine. So today we're gonna test that theory. Right here, I have a petcock for a Raptor 600. One day delivery from Buddy Bezos, 20 bucks. Let's see if it works. This is what somebody said in the comments. I didn't bother to verify it. I'm just trusting you. Gotta love Pittsburgh's no packaging. Every single extension you use breaks off immediately and you gotta dig it out with a pair of needle nose pliers. 
This is the second extension I've pulled off that has broken off immediately. I mean, the entire set was 12 bucks. What am I complaining about? Thankfully, this motorcycle very politely leaked all the gas out of it. So uh, I don't have to worry about any spilling now when I change the petcock. Definitely gonna have to plug this vacuum line up because the new one does not have one. All right, how's this gonna work? Absolutely not, dude. That isn't gonna work at all. Come on, dude. They were so sure. These guys were like, yeah, Raptor 600 will to work. Well, that's what I get for listening to the comment section. Yeah, that doesn't work at all. Well, damn it, dude. I'm glad I had to find out before you did. Although shame on the person who told me that would work. They got like four comments saying that that would be a direct fit. And all four of y'all have obviously never actually done this on a KZ-1000 because you're full of shit. All right, the KZ-1000 runs. We have various other motorcycles, most of them provided by Sugar Tree J back there. Motorcycles of varying reliability, varying condition, varying states of legality. That's okay. That's why me and Jason get along. <laughs> they got two wheels and a motor that make cool motorcycle sounds. We're getting ready for that ride. Like I said, we're meeting up here, 10.30 a.m., 630 Southwest Walnut Street in Hillsboro, Oregon. Come hang out with your favorite bunch of greasy weirdos in a parking lot. Who doesn't love that? I hope I see you guys there. There. It's going to be an awesome time. We've got a great ride plan. Insane giveaways that we're doing, of course, provided again by Sugar Tree J back here. Sessions, by the way, I know a lot of you guys already use Sessions and already love it. I don't have to convince you guys at all. You already know how good it is. For everyone who hasn't tried it, trust me, you're going to get blown away. That's going to about do it for this video, but tune in for it directly after this video comes out. Hopefully, maybe, possibly. A live stream. Shaylee and Cami Bay are hard at lurk still here in the green room. Get it? Because the walls are green. <laughs> and we're going to do our very first sessions live stream with Shaylee, Cami Bay, and of course, the man himself, Sugar Tree J. And me. I think I might show up as well. Nobody cares about you. All right. Bye. <laughs> All right. Till a few minutes from now when we see you on the live stream, keep it weird. Crashing through the sky comes a fearful cry. Shade Tree. Never say die, walking tall with banners high. Shade Tree Army, a ruthless gang of scum, villains, freaks, and bikers determined to rule the world.